Okay, in this example, or a couple examples, we're going to talk about limits at infinity, um, either positive infinity or negative infinity. And the idea is the same in a regular limit. Um, in this case, what the notation means is you're putting in, you know, values of x, in this case, that get larger and larger and larger. So maybe I'll put 100 into this formula, get a number out. I'll put, <clears throat> excuse me, 1,000 into this formula, get a number out. I'll put a million into the formula, get a number out, a billion, a trillion, a gajillion, and you just keep going and going and going. And the idea is, you know, if the numbers you're getting out are getting closer and closer to something, again, that's what we say the limit is. In these problems, um, limits at infinity I like a little bit better, only in the sense that they're a little more straightforward. They're, the basic ones are a bit more mechanical. And again, just like anything in math, there's definitely variations on this theme. But when you have a rational function, and again, that's a polynomial over a polynomial, you always look at the highest power of x in the denominator. So in this case, my highest power of x is x cubed. And what we're going to do is we divide every single term in the problem by x cubed. So I'll get the limit x goes to infinity. I'll take 3x squared, divide that by x cubed. I'm going to take 5x, divide that by x cubed. I'll take 4, divide that by x cubed. I'll have x cubed over x cubed. And then I'll have 7x over x cubed. Okay, so the next thing here is we just simply simplify this down a little bit. So 3x squared over x cubed, I'll have 1x left over in the denominator. 5x over x cubed, I'll get 5 over x squared. Well, there's not much to do with the 4 over x cubed term, so we'll just leave that alone. x cubed over x cubed is 1. And we have 7x over x cubed, so that'll give me 7 over x squared. Okay, at this point, um, we've kind of done our simplification. And the idea is now, okay, so x is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, let's think about 3 over x. What's going to happen to that? Well, 3 over 10, 3 over 100, 3 over 1,000, 3 over 10,000, 3 over a million, a billion. You know, if you put those numbers into a calculator, you'll see that they're all getting closer and closer to the number zero. So that's what happens to this piece. As x goes to infinity, we'll get zero for this. Same thing, five over a number that's getting bigger and bigger, if we square it, this whole term is going to go to zero also. Four over x cubed is also going to become zero. Well, one stays one. Same thing with our 7 over x squared. That's going to go off to 0. So what are we left with? Well, we're left with 0 on top, 1 on the bottom, and it says our limit in this case is going to equal 0. Let's do one more of these. Let's look at, say, the limit as x goes to negative infinity of x to the fourth plus x over 5x to the 8th. Uh, let's not make it 5x to the 8th. Let's make it 5x to the 3rd plus 7. So again, I'm picking on x to the 3rd. Same idea, though. I pick out the highest power of x in the denominator. Well, again, I've got an x to the 3rd. That's my highest power of x in the denominator. And I'm going to divide everything by that. So I've got x approaching negative infinity. I'll have x to the fourth divided by x to the third. I've got x divided by x to the third. I've got 5x to the third divided by x to the third. And then I have 7 divided by x to the third. So let's keep simplifying. We have the limit as x goes to negative infinity. Well, x to the fourth divided by x, that leaves me with 1x. x over x to the third, that's 1 over x squared. 5x to the third over x to the third is 5. 
and then there's nothing to do with the 7 over x to the third. Just like before, okay, so, well, as x is going to negative infinity, we'll think about this term in a second. But notice 1 over x squared, just like before, this is going to go off to 0. Again, whether I take a negative number or a positive number, I'm going to get a big number in the denominator. Well, 1 over a big number, whether it's positive or negative, will go to 0. The same thing with 7 over x to the third. That's going to go to 0. And what are we really left with? Well, if these terms are going to 0, as x goes to negative infinity, well, x will go to negative infinity. So we're left with negative infinity divided by 5. Well, that's still equivalent to negative infinity. If you take a big negative number and divide it by 5, it's still a big negative number. And that would be your solution. So in this case, you could say that this limit does not exist. Sometimes people will say that. To me, it's a little clearer to say that it's going off to negative infinity. It gives you a little more insight into what's happening. So some useful little tricks for these limit problems are as follows. Let me cover them up here. The first case, and these work if you have a rational function. Again, that's a polynomial over a polynomial. So suppose first off that the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator. So what that means is we look at the highest power on the top. Well, that's an x to the 10th term. I look at the highest power on the bottom. Well, it's also an x to the 10th term. And whether x is going to positive infinity or negative infinity, it makes no difference. The solution, you basically look at the ratio of the coefficients of those terms. Well, I've got 4x to the 10th. I have 5x to the 10th. You can do a little bit of work and show that in this case, the solution will actually turn out to be 4 fifths. So kind of a little shortcut to use on these problems. Our next case, well, if the degree of the numerator is strictly smaller than the degree of the denominator, again, whether you're going to positive infinity or negative infinity, it's going to turn out that this limit is always equal to 0. Last but not least, well, the only other case is if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. And in that case, your limit's going to work out to either be positive or negative infinity. And it's going to depend on, you know, whether your term on top is squared, or excuse me, whether the power is even or odd, and whether it's going to positive or negative infinity. So these are the ones that you're going to have to think about a little bit more. In this case, you can work and show that you actually get positive infinity. And the way that you would work all of these examples is just like the other examples that we just did. You would pick the highest power in the denominator and divide everything through by that and use the result that basically 1 over a variable power, whether it's going to positive or negative infinity, will give you 0. And you have to think about the other ones individually. So I hope this makes a little sense. We're going to do definitely some more complicated limits at infinity um, on some other videos. There are some involving radicals, um, so those can be a little more confusing, but hopefully, again, none of them will be that bad for you.